Good day everybody, it's Steve Fitchman speaking. Uh, welcome to the latest of our tips and tricks videos for Call EPM Cloud. Uh, today we're going to cover Flex Forms, uh, which are available for users of the planning, FCC and tax business processes, as well as soon to be PCM. So just to explain what a Flex Form is, the name kind of is a pretty good guide. Um, it's a type of form available in SmartView that gives users more flexibility, best covered in the demo that will follow shortly. Uh, the good news is that it's very easy for admins or power users to set up flex forms. So you will literally, after this video, be able to take action straight away and have something up and running um, straight away. Um, it's not new per se, but there was an extension December last year, which I will touch on. Uh, everybody has access to this irrespective of the license model you're on. And uh, last of all, there is a need for one of the features, the most recent one, to be on the latest version 21.100.200 of SmartView. Uh, it does actually work with 21.100 when we've tested it. Um, but uh, earlier versions, most of what you're going to see works, but I would probably encourage you always to trying to get on the latest version of SmartView, and here's a good reason why. So just to kind of explain where the flex forms fit, uh, forms you're probably familiar with in terms of your system setup, they're used all over the place. Um, there's some really good features of forms um, and one of the most important is that they're kind of, they're quite structured and controlled um, and there are calculations that run automatically based upon the actions taken in the form which is getting stronger and stronger and more important as Groovy is adopted more and more. However, there is some things that, I guess there's some areas where a form is a bit inflexible and I've highlighted some examples there which we'll cover in the demo. There is another option uh, for probably more a power user to be able to take that form into an ad hoc. And the big downside of that is you lose a bit of control um, may be fine for a power user, but that's about as far as you would want to go. And also you lose the ability for the calculations to be intrinsically linked to the actions taking place on the forms. So hence there's a gap and it is into that gap that flex forms come. And uh, you can see we got yeses to all of our criteria there. And I'm going to use the rest of the time to cover through demo. Aside from to say there are still a few things that aren't supported by flex forms, which I've shown at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to move on to demonstration. And in this demonstration, I'm going to show a normal form and a flex form, uh, starting with a normal form, which I've already rendered. Um, it is by intention because it relates to one of the use cases that we have stacked two dimensions and the more you stack into the rows, the more powerful this can be. So we've got our account dimension and our entity or city dimension. Um, I'm paging down. You can see that suppression is not switched on at this point. It could be, but I deliberately didn't. Um, and it's a kind of reasonable size, not that kind of huge, about 700 rows or something. Uh, so not that big, but it will take a little bit of time to render without the suppression switched on. I can't do much with this form if I try to like change anything. I just tried to type in over the top, it kind of everything is kind of protected. Um, and if I wanted to come and let's say use the filtering functionality or sorting functionality of Excel, I can't. Um, so that's kind of a good segue into using a flex form. So my form number two flex form has got a different icon. Um, I can right click and you can see it can be opened in three different modes. I'm just going to double click because it's a flex form. It's going to default behaving behavior into flex form style. So the form has opened and you can see straight away um, that it's suppressed all the missing rows. Now, that's not special in and of itself. Um, but what the pro and the con of suppression is that if you want to add a new row, it's a bit tricky. Well, it's not tricky with a flex form. So if I have realized that I need to add some data in here for Melbourne, 
Um, and I can spell Melbourne correctly. Um, I can simply insert a row, fill in the re requisite details, and I get my row. And I can now go ahead, put in a thousand bucks, submit the data, but safe in the knowledge that the calculations that are linked to this form, because it is still a form, are going to continue to operate as per normal. I could have gone and pasted that row at the bottom, or I could come and paste like a series of rows at the bottom. So if I've got my data somewhere else and I'm trying to kind of transcribe it, so to speak, then um, that would work well with a flex form. So another thing that I might want to do is think, well, I'm going to quite like to have a look at my budget right now. So I'm going to click refresh. Um, and by intention, that's actually not going to work right now because I didn't set up the form to allow us to flex columns. I was flexing the rows. But I'm going to go now and show how one sets up a form and we're going to actually enable the column. So for those who haven't seen it before, this is the form authoring studio for admins and power users to use. And there is options for smart view. The options for Smart View separately allow row and column. So I'm going to click to switch on for column. I'm now going to click on my scenario here, set up to be in the column. And it will give me the option which has only appeared after I ticked the earlier kind of enable button to flex beyond the column definition. So this form has been set up with actual and plan. If I want to add budget, I will need to flex beyond the definition. If I click on my accounts, you can see that I haven't actually needed to click to do that since the definition is all entities and all accounts in the PL, so it kind of has everything in it. But you can pick and choose where you elect to use this feature. So I'm going to save. I'm going to come back. I'm going to reopen my flex form just to kind of refresh for that additional or updated definition. Uh, I'm going to add my budget. Click refresh. And there we go. I'm going to need data, but you can see the form has respected that change. Now there is one more setting to highlight. Um, if you go to Smart View Options, Member Options, and you tick Flex Forms, Preserve, Grid, or POV, what that means is that this change to add the budget or to add my row for Melbourne, if I go and I won't do it, but if I change it to FY22, it will respect that change. Um, otherwise, it would drop. Okay. So a couple more things we can do with our flex forms. If you want to use filtering, um, we can. So we will just uh, choose to have a look at the data that's in Darwin today. If I want to go and change my Darwin data and submit it, I can. And it will respect that change. I can also sort. Um, however, you need to bear in mind that when you sort, at least at the moment, you lose the ability to submit after you've done a sort. Uh, which I expect Oracle will, uh, in the fullness of time, provide that functionality. So there concludes kind of our overview of um, FlexForms. Just to kind of summarize, it's something that and I showed you how, and the screenshots are pretty much all you have to do. Uh, it's something that you can set up in minutes. Users will, will love it since it gives them more flexibility and some of the use cases are strongest in projects, in workforce, um, in public sector. Um, but really, it's circumstances where you're kind of working with a larger amount of data and uh, you just need to give a little bit more flexibility for the user to work within the form. Thank you for attending our session. If you'd like more information, please reach out to us. And there is a more in-depth Customer Connect session uh, a couple of months ago, which I've highlighted there. Thank you very much. Bye.